We had our troubles. When that bunch began to realize what was happening, they didn't like it. We wore our horses to a frazzle, but we kept that herd on the trail right up to dusk and tired them out as much as to get distance behind us. We kept a sharp lookout, but saw no Indians. Santa Fe was a smaller town than we expected, and it sure didn't shape up to more than a huddle of adobe houses built around a sun-baked plaza, but it was the most town I'd ever seen, or Oren. Folks stood in the doorways and shaded their eyes as, as we bunched our cows, and then three riders, Spanish men, started up the trail toward us. They were cantering their horses and staring at us. Then they broke into a gallop and came charging up with shrill yells that almost started our herd again. It was Miguel and Pete Romero and a rider named Abreu. Oh, Miguel was smiling. It's good to see you, amigo. We've been watching for you. Don Lewis has asked that you be his guest for dinner. Does he know we're here? Orrin was surprised. Miguel glanced at him. Don Lewis knows most things, senor. A rider brought news from the Vegas. They remained with the herd while we rode into town. We walked uh, over to the La Fonda and left our horses in the shade. It was cool inside and quiet. It was shadowed there like a cathedral, only this here was no cathedral. It was a drinking place and a hotel too, I guess. Mostly there were Spanish men sitting around talking in a soft, that soft sound and tongue of theirs. And it, it gave me a wonderful feeling of being a traveled man, of being in foreign parts. A couple of them spoke to us, most polite. We sat down and dug deep for the little we had. It wasn't much, but enough for a few glasses of wine and may have something to eat. I like hearing the soft murmur of voices and the clink of glasses and the click of heels on the floor. Somewhere out back a woman laughed, and it was a mighty fine sound. And while we sat there, an army officer came in, a tall man, thirty-ish, with a clean uniform and a, a stiff way of walking like those army men have. He had a mighty fancy mustache. Are you the men? Who own those cattle on the edge of town? Are you in the market? Orrin said. That depends on the price. He sat down with us and ordered a glass of wine. I'll be frank, gentlemen. There's been a drought here and a lot of cattle have been lost. Most of the stock is very thin and yours is the first fat beef we've seen. Tom Sunday glanced up and smiled. We'll want $25 per head. The captain merely glanced at him. Of course not, he said. <clears throat> then he smiled at us and looked at his glass. Your health. What about Don Luis Alvarado? Orrin asked suddenly. The captain's expression stiffened a little, and he asked, Are you one of the Pritz crowd? No, Tom Sunday said. We've met the Don out on the plains. Came west from Abilene with him, as a matter of fact. He's one of those who welcomed us in New Mexico. Before we took over the territory, the Mexican government was in no position to send troops to protect these colonials from the Indians. Also, most of the trade was between uh, Santa Fe and the States, rather than between Santa Fe and Mexico. The Don appreciated this, and most of the people here welcomed us. Jonathan Prince is, is bringing in settlers, Soren said. Mr. Pritz is a forceful and energetic man, the captain said, but he is under the false impression that because New Mexico has become a possession of the United States, I should say a part of the United States, that the property rights of all the Spanish-speaking people will be tossed out the window. There was a pause. <clears throat> the settlers, if one wishes to call them that, that Jonathan Pritz is bringing in are all men who bring their guns instead of families. I had me another glass of wine and sat back and listened and the captain talking with Tom Sunday. Seems the captain was out of that army school, West Point. But he was a man who had he'd read a, a sight of books. A man never realizes how little he knows 
until he listens to folks like that talk. Up where I was born, we had the Bible. And once in a while, somebody would bring a newspaper, but it was a rare thing when we saw any other kind of reading. Politics was a high card up in the hills. A political speech would bring out the whole country. Folks would pack their picnic lunches, and you'd, you'd see people at a speech you'd never see elsewhere. Back in those days, most everybody grew up knowing as much about local politics as about coon dogs, which was about equal as an interest. Orrin and me, we just sat and listened. A man can learn a lot if he listens. And if I didn't learn anything else, I was learning how much I didn't know. And it made me hungry to know it all and mad because I was getting so late a start. We picked up a few more head of cattle coming south and the way it was going to figure out, each of us would have more than a thousand dollars of his own when we'd settled up. The next day, Orrin and Cap went to the stage office and arranged to ship east the gold we'd found in the wagon. The itch to see the town got the best of me, so I walked outside. Those black-eyed senoritas was enough to turn a man's good sense. If Orrin would look at some of those girls, he'd forget all about Laura. It was no wonder he fell for her, after a man has been surrounded for months by a lot of hard-headed, hairy-chested men, even the doggiest kind of female looks mighty good. Most of all, right now, I wanted a bath and a shave. Cap, he followed me. Seems to me there's some strange things around town need seeing to, I suggested. You look here, Tyrell. If you're thinking of what I think you're thinking, you'd better scout the country and study the sign before you make your move. If you figure to court a Spanish go, you also better figure to fight her man. Seems like it might be worth it. This was siesta time. A dog opened one eye and wagged a tail to show that I didn't bother him. He'd be pleased. Me, I wasn't of a mind to bother anybody. Taking it slow, I walked down the dusty street. The town was quiet. A wide door opened into a long barn-like building with a lot of tubs and water running in a ditch. There was a homemade soap there and nobody around. And there was a pump too and it was the first time I ever saw a pump inside a house. And folks are sure getting lazy won't even go outside the house to pump. This must be a public bathhouse, but there was nobody around to take my money. I filled the tub with water and stripped off and got in, and when I covered with soap head to foot, three women came in with bundles of clothes on their heads. First off, I stared, and they stared, and then I yelled, and all of a sudden I realized this here was no bathhouse, but a, a place to wash clothes. And those Spanish girls had taken one look, and then they began to shriek, and first off, I figured they were scared, but... They weren't running. They were just standing there laughing at me. Laughing. Grabbing a bucket of water, I doused myself with it and grabbed it up a towel. And they ran outside and I could hear screams and I never crawled in my clothes so fast in all my born days. Slinging gun bell around me at a dead run, I beat it for my horse. It must have been a sight, me all soapy in that tub, red around the gills. I started dapple out of town on a run, and the last thing I could hear was laughter. Women sure do beat all.